for Love and Thunder 2022 movie review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a movie review on the newest Thor, Thor Love and Thunder from 2022. Now, to be honest guys, if I had to pick one superhero in the MCU that I liked the most, it would definitely be Thor. For a while there, I was avoiding all the Marvel movies except for the first Avengers, that was the only one I watched. I ended up watching the first Thor, the second Thor, and then after that I watched all the Avengers because he's in the Avengers. So, unfortunately for me, I feel like he never had one movie that was just perfect. Um, the first movie was just really flat, doesn't hit. The second movie is pretty much agreed on that that's the worst Thor movie. Um, Ragnarok, everybody seems to like Ragnarok and it was so great, but for me, um, there was just so many bad things, so many things they did to just destroy Thor in that movie, like subconsciously, that I just can't get into it. So um, coming into this one, I had really no hope. I saw that the reviews for this were bad and I almost wasn't going to watch it, but thank goodness that I did because I'm not going to lie, this is probably my favorite Thor, no BS. So, so let's jump into the pros I have with this movie. The pros I had is that it respects Thor so much more than the previous entries. Like... I liked Ragnarok, but I'm watching a movie called Thor. I want to see Thor dominate, and he just gets dominated the entire movie. It starts out with them creating a sister for him. The sister's more powerful than Thor, like pretty much kicks Thor's butt. Then Thor's like in captive the whole time. Then he unleashes his powers, and then he goes back, and he still can't beat his sister. He gets his hair cut. He loses his eye. They just destroyed Thor in Ragnarok. So this movie, Thor is most of the time he's on top of things. Like very little times is he in turmoil. Very little times is he even in captive. I don't even know if he's a captive this whole time in the whole movie. So I just like that if you're a Thor fan, it was just, it kept a very high image of Thor throughout the movie. He's always a very formidable opponent and he's never really too weak. I really appreciated that. So a lot of the problems people said they have this movie is that it had too much humor. They did crank up the humor in Ragnarok. Sometimes it was funny, sometimes not. For me, I gotta be honest, I felt like this was probably the funniest Thor. Now there was definitely stuff that they did that just absolutely did not hit, I did not think was funny. But a lot of these jokes I found witty and funny. And when Chris Helmsworth does this Thor where he like, acts so confident of himself but he's like really just like missing the point it's just so funny you know it's just hilarious so i'm not gonna lie a lot of the humor was funny definitely not everything but i thought this was actually a funny movie um i feel like this was also a good use of jane to kind of bring her back and then also like a lot of times in movies they have a you know, even like in Ragnarok, they have an idea of let's bring a girl in here and let's just have the girl dominate the guy, kind of like Thor's sister. And she's a very formidable opponent of like a really good friend. Like she's not gonna be better than Thor, but she could definitely help out. She can definitely save him multiple times. She can definitely handle her own. I felt like it was a great use of making her strong, really interesting, but not like better than Thor the whole movie, you know? I felt like it was a great way to use her and how she uses the hammer, just very good. Um, um, and I feel like the main thing that I liked about this movie was that it was very easy to watch and it was just so fun. There's certain aspects to this movie being easy and fun to watch that take away certain things and the negatives, but we'll wait till I get there. But overall, guys, I wanted just a fun, easy to watch movie where, you know, Thor has to beat somebody, but most of the time it's funny. Most of the time Thor's in the in the right and winning. And that's what I have with this movie. It's just very easy to watch for me. I think Christian Bale is a great actor, a great addition. He's probably one of the scariest villains here. And I like the idea of him having this, this blade that can actually kill gods. So anybody who's technically a god can die by this specific blade. I feel like it was a very good idea. I'm gonna be getting to more Zeus in a little bit, but I think the idea of bringing Zeus into this and having Zeus have this power of the Thunderbolt, I feel like those were both really smart ideas. Maybe on the execution, they could have done them a little bit better, but um, I think the idea of bringing Zeus in, having him being like the king of the gods and having a thunderbolt as his weapon, I think the both those were good ideas. So anyways, guys, that pretty much ends the pros. Let's jump into the cons that I have with this movie. You know, the cons, there's really not too many big ones, to be honest. Like, I really wish there was Loki in here. I really wish there was some Anthony Hopkins in here. I know Anthony Hopkins kind of dies or he kind of goes away at every single one. But I wish those two were in here. The main thing I could see why people wouldn't like this movie is there's not that many very big events. When you think of Ragnarok, like when his sister first comes and challenges him and beats him, 
that's a really big event. You know, when he finally fights um, the Hulk and he has to gain his power to beat the Hulk, that's a really big, like, world-ending event. And then also, too, when he fights his sister at the end at, back in Ragnarok, all these events have just heavy weight to them, mainly because Thor is kind of without his power, he's unable to do anything. So it's like when he finally gets the ability to beat the thing or overcome it, it means so much more. So you don't really have those moments in here. It's just kind of like the things he has to deal with are so slight of an issue. You don't even really take them seriously, but it's a worthy trade-off for me because I just liked how, you know, just easy to watch and how good Thor was overall, but there wasn't these big dramatic scenes like there was in Ragnarok and then I'm not going to be getting to spoilers but I found that love and thunder really doesn't mean Thor and Jane so I was just kind of like yeah I really wish they meant made love and thunder Thor and Jane that's just me personally it means something else at the end there was a couple forced woke scenes in this movie and I just find that it weird because they filmed the woke scenes in a way that you could just take them out so it's almost like they're unnecessary and they're added and then I feel like when they send them to other countries based on other countries' laws, they're just gonna pull them out because like, they're so easy to pull out. So I just find it weird if you're gonna have this woke message, you feel so like I'm gonna put this message out here, but I'm gonna make it in a way that I can remove it from the movie at any second. And if I'm gonna send it to a country where people are gonna spend less dollars, I'm afraid to say my woke message. So it was just kind of weird that they have these forced woke scenes. You know, it's in every Marvel movie now. It's about a minute and it's just something that could be snipped in and out and like I don't mind if it feels organic but for some reason it just doesn't feel organic because it's like a minute scene that could purposely be taken out you know what I mean and then another thing I just found really out of taste for me was that there was several times when Thor goes to Zeus and Zeus is kept keeps talking about orgies and I don't know what it is but just it just didn't feel right for this kind of movie. It just felt a little too extreme. I mean, if they said it once, maybe we could have got past it, but they just keep mentioning it. And like, I have no problem with R-rated movies. I don't have a problem with any movie mentioning that or having it. It's like, it is what it is. But for this movie, it just felt really out of taste, you know? And then if like, if I had a kid and they say it like, they say it like three times. So you're almost like obligated to, add, to say something. And it just felt really out of place in this movie. The last couple of things I didn't like was the yelling goats. So at some point, I don't even know if they're goats, but they get these animals that travel with them and they're like the human voices just yelling. I forget even what they yell, but it's just a dumb yell. And every single time they go somewhere, they leave somewhere, they yell. And it just wasn't really ever that funny and it gets annoying by the end. Another thing I didn't really like about this movie was it's a one and done for Jane. It seems like when you're setting up this movie, it's like, it's almost like she was like, hey, I want to do one last movie, but I want it to be one and done. I want to be out of this movie, out of the series for good. I just felt like it was kind of weird that it was a one and done when initially it felt like we were bringing her back. But anyways, guys, I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed this movie. If I had to rate it, I would give it a 7.5 to an 8 and I gotta say it was probably my favorite Thor for you guys I would say it's a buy try or pass a solid try I mean if you wanted to see it you probably already have it's really popular right now but it was a lot better than I anticipated and it was probably my favorite Thor by no means perfect like I would say my favorite movie including Thor would probably be Infinity War but of the Thor movies, this one's definitely my favorite, hands down. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think of Love and Thunder. What would you rate it down below? I really, really like it. Very high regards, and I always like Thor. So anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and I couldn't do without any of your guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully, I'm having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace. up with the Guardians of the Galaxy.